You've been teaching at Roosevelt for five years, uh, is that right? Yes. Um, so I was and, there a year and a half of the old building, and then yeah. as long as we've been in the new one. Yeah. Or, um, and you now teach um, special education, English, literature. Um, uh, um, the, when you think about how the, the school has changed so far, um, what have you seen? And when you think about what uh, Imani and Demetrius have told us um, about Roosevelt and, and not recommending it potentially now yet to, um, to an up-and-coming middle schooler, um, what does Roosevelt most need next? I, I think we need to, to keep changing in the direction that we've gone. When I started at Roosevelt, it was, it was a very different place from where it is now. Um, you know, 80% of my day was in trying to maintain some kind of uh, order in my classroom and then the hallways. And that's gotten better every year we've been there. Um, you know, the th conversation we were having backstage, I think at Roosevelt, you know, a student or a teacher, anyone is going to find what they're looking for. Um, and if you're looking for the positive uh, things there, there are those opportunities. You know, Imani was able to find that with Miss Jess. Uh, Demetrius was able to find that with the student government. Um, I fall backwards into good opportunities there. I, I love the place. But, uh, you know, I think we as uh, faculty and adults need to change um, with the population that's coming into the school and with the, the resources that are coming into it. If we keep doing the same old thing, we'll get the same old results. In what, so, in what ways do you need to change what you say? Um, you know, we've developed a culture and we're developing a culture at the school that allows education to take place now, where we're not spending 80% of our time managing uh, behaviors. And I think now it's time to move to that next level where we're pushing our academics to a level that's going to make Roosevelt a premier school, not just in uh, DC, but anywhere in the country. And I think, you know, we're working to develop the staff and develop the skills as staff members to do that. So Principal James, let me turn to you. <laughs> um, uh, making Roosevelt, uh, 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 Mr. Z has just laid out um, one, um, one marker of success that sounds great and sounds ambitious, making Roosevelt um, a place, a premier school, not just in DC, but across the country. Um, now you came, I was looking through the parental DC blogosphere and I know that um, you, you are new and will be new to, to Roosevelt. You've been acting principal and, and will be taking um, a <coughs> principal at the school when it begins in its brand new headquarters in the fall. Um, you came from Burroughs Elementary School, where my understanding is the parents would have loved to keep you. You know, this is a school, it's, things are going well. Um, uh, f folks would have loved to uh, have you stay there for longer, but you, you took on this brand new challenge. Um, what drew you to Roosevelt, first of all? I think the same thing that drew me to education, which is the desire to make a lasting impact in the lives of others. And specifically with Roosevelt, it's a huge opportunity. It's actually a principal's dream, brand new building, opportunity to reestablish instructional focus, make a school and create a school environment and where all voices are heard and where all needs are met, regardless of our individual learner profiles. I think that's what really drew me to the school um, and caused me to say yes to my wonderful chancellor, Chancellor Kaya Henderson, uh, when asked. I th I'm certain that that is exactly what drew me in addition to just um, believing that my steps are ordered and that I'm called to specific places. And so this is where I believe I'm supposed to be at this time. Yeah. What do you think of as models that encourage you? What are you looking to as examples that say, yes, we can make this happen? Absolutely. I think the young people, as well as Mr. Zanecki, started to have that conversation, and I'd just like to build on it. One, create an environment where collaboration, authentic collaboration takes place. And so what that really means is being able to hear the voices of the people that we serve and the people that I serve. So the people that I serve include everyone in the building. And so making sure I have a thorough understanding of where have we been and where do we want to go, um, not just with my ideas ideas, but with the community's ideas. So we're talking about in-house community ideas as well as out-house, um, meaning our neighborhood community ideas and what will allow Roosevelt High School to become the premier high school. Yeah. How do you, how will you, looking out a few years from now, so we've got, I mean, you've got plenty of work over the next year. You're also, in addition to um, uh, um, 
starting in the new building, um, the renovated building, you're also <coughs> seeing the, the, um, the restart of McFarland Middle School. Yes, um, you've got a lot of challenges ahead of you. What, looking a few years out, how would you measure your own success? How I will love you your say? question. So I have decided to backwards map and do the same thing I ask of teachers, which is think about where do we want our students at the end of this unit, at the end of this lesson. And so I asked Aquella, where do you want to be in five years? And so I decided to think about a plan specifically for Roosevelt High School as well as McFarland. So I've created this phase. Uh, phase of plans. Phase one being uh, establish the new culture, establish the new instructional <coughs> focus, which includes the first two years. During those two years, McFarland will be a part of our learning environment. After that, uh, McFarland will operate as a standalone in its third year, which will allow us to enter into phase two. Phase two is an opportunity in which our scholars are able to go to other countries and then participate in international exchange. We already will, in during phase one, participate in virtual exchange with other countries as well as uh, classes that are nationally recognized. Um, what that does in phase two is really allow students the pearl of what I consider learning, which is exposure. And so creating an environment where students look forward to coming to school, not just because of the academics, because we have great technology and because we have a beautiful building, and because there exists rough rider pride, rough rider pride because every one of us have the same level of verve that walk through that building. Every one of us have the same level of passion and mutual respect for one another, regardless of our titles and or our age. So when I think about phase two, I really do think about buzz in the atmosphere in such a way where our students and our community and uh, community members and other stakeholders are really doing the work for us and sharing all of our good, good, great news. And then in phase three, really looking at our um, instructional focus again and seeing what additional things can we add and what additional things, since we've traveled and moved uh, along the line, what things do we no longer need to do? So still always thinking forward and wondering um, and being intentional, including all stakeholders, especially my scholars. <laughs> So, Amani and Demetrius, are, are you feeling Rough Rider Pride right now? Are you starting to <laughs> yeah, yeah. getting invigorated? You, um, uh, what advice would you have to give uh, based on your experience at Roosevelt um, while it was housed at McFarland a couple, a little bit before um, uh, at Roosevelt in the past. What advice do you have for, for Principal James? Uh, you are. I mean, just how I do as the president of Roosevelt, you have to treat each student the same because a lot of teachers don't. They might treat the black kids different than they treat mm -hmm. the Latino kids, and you can't do that. I mean, people, I guess, in my school, they love me because I treat everybody the same. Like, I'm cool with the cool kids, the ones that get in trouble, I walk past the halls, dap everybody up, show everybody love the same way as teachers, just to show everybody, like it's a way different environment that kids feel and it's not, it's that way so they can't learn. It's like a disability for them to learn because they don't wanna to go to class because they made fun of by teachers. So I would just say make, make them feel loved, all of them. And once they see that you love all of them and you're not picking on certain ones, they're gonna love you and they're gonna do the work that you want for them. So in five years, you could be looked back on as a great principal for Roosevelt. Well, thank you kindly. You're welcome. Mm. One thing I would tell you is to, like, the vision you have for Rose now is, is the vision I wish somebody else had. I'm not saying that. I understand. But, yeah, like, so I wish, like, Roosevelt had that type of environment when I was there. Then I maybe wouldn't have been. I just want to tell you to, like, stick to your plan. Don't get discouraged, because it's going to take some time to try to change the environment at Rose. Don't get discouraged. Like, keep trying to do what you're doing. Like, you're going to change somebody's life. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Mr. Z, I want to turn back to you for a second. You've been, again, you've been Roosevelt for five years. Um, when you look forward, um, the school is going to change not just in location, back to where it was previously in a brand spanking new, shiny new building, um, but also somewhat in focus and curriculum. Um, uh, the, uh, the program will, will uh, emphasize more global studies um, than it has previously, and McFarland will feed into that plan. Um, what do you, when you look at that shift, um, what do you both expect from how the school will change, and what, what are your concerns, if any? Um, 
I don't know. I try to practice acceptance at all things, so I don't get concerned very often. Uh, I, I think the world's going to be what it's going to be, whether I make a decision about it one way or not. Um, and with that philosophy, I, I'm just excited about it. I, I want to see this change because I, uh, you know, I've seen in our students this incredible potential that they're just screaming to get it out. Um, and when you have the opportunity to see it in students like Demetrius or Imani, it's beyond touching. It's it kind of just transcends everything that you think of uh, when you think of student success. And we have the potential to do that. You know, what I, I, I want to see in, you know, five years is just the, the visual representation of uh, Miss James's vision that in the, the neighborhood around DC, um, all throughout Petworth and all throughout Ro the Roosevelt area, people are just wearing Roosevelt gear because they want to represent the school. And when people are asking about it, like, no, you need to, you need to come to this school. Like, it's amazing. Um, and you know, that's something that I am proud to be a part of. Um, I've gotten the opportunity to help this school transition from where it was when I started to, to what it's becoming and what it is now. And I'm just happy to be part of the move to the next step of that, where you know, we turn a, a good start into a, kind of a great experience. Um, I think we have time for maybe one question. We've got someone right here. I think the first hand that I saw up was right here um, in front. <laughs> Whoever. Whoever. Whoever wants it most. At the last minute, lucky day. Uh, as, thanks for your presentation. You did a wonderful job and I had a good dreams. I just wonder, in this uh, 21st century, and uh, not just you, I mean, your school students have involved any civic organizations. What do you think about the Black Lives Matters? And what do you think about your civic organization involved with any boom movement? And what do you think you have registered to vote? Or what do you think about our election of 2016 about? So, uh, uh, Principal James, I'm good. Uh, or, no, no, uh, I, Mr. Z, I'll point it to you. Well, just one of the, the parts of the program that I work with is uh, social or kind of community service. Uh, this year we did a voter registration drive at the school. Um, and we registered, I think, 65 seniors. And in DC, fortunately, you can register students 16 and up. Um, so we registered over 100 students this year uh, doing that at lunchtime, not promoting any type of political agenda. I don't think that's my position as an educator. Um, I think it's my position to give students the opportunity to uh, do something and educate them about their ability to do it and not make that decision for them. They need to take in all of the information they can and make a decision about whom they're going to vote for or not vote for. Um, I think our role as educators and our role as a school is to give them the opportunity to be part of that process. It sounds, I mean, looking at Demetrius and Amani and listening to you today, it sounds like that will not be a challenge for you to step up um, to what Mr. Z's laid out. Um, I think we're out of time, but uh, thank you very much for, for sharing this afternoon, and best of luck to all of you. Best of luck, Principal James. Thank best of luck, much. Mr. Z and thank Amani you. and Demetrius. Congratulations, and best of luck to thank you. you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Margaret Lowe Smith. So it's been a day. Thank you all, uh, especially those of you who've lasted with us from beginning to end. Um, I'd like to say just a few words. Um, my staff is going to start coming out as I speak because we have a closing special treat for you. Um, we began the day exploring the role of education in a changing America, and in truth, it was an underlying theme of the whole day. This is great. I guess you know it's gonna be something to do with music. Um, and I just wanna quote one person who I think put it beautifully. Nicole Hannah-Jones said, education is about building citizenship. It's one of the most important institutions in democracy. And I think probably quoting uh, Nicole is a, a beautiful way to end the day. 
I want to thank our underwriters for making today possible, the Walton Family Foundation, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the College Board, the American Federation of Teachers, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and the Lumina Foundation. We're so grateful for their support. Um, you've been an incredible audience. We're going to treat you with cocktails um, after this. This will be your version of recess. Um, and we hope you'll join us again, uh, again tomorrow where we'll talk about higher education. If you do come back tomorrow, bring your same badges. Um, so before you go, the treat. Um, we want to welcome the concert choir of the School Without Walls. This is a preview of what they hope to sing when they go to Cuba. Uh, they're still fundraising for that trip, and if, you'll, if you don't mind and you, and you uh, want to help, uh, they would be willing to accept it. They still need to raise a few thousand dollars for their trip to Cuba. But for now, they're here to sing us a tune and to, uh, to leave us an end on an uplifting note. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, cocktails in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs>